you can give it a try and see if you like it. Everyone is invited. And that's on Monday at what time? Ten. Ten. Here? Yeah. Yes. Um, one more thing. This week uh, we have um, a, a public outreach lecture uh, about Einstein and black holes. And uh, that will take place. Uh, there is a seat here. Can <laughs> um, that will take place at uh, 5.30 p.m. Uh, tomorrow at uh, the basement of the Oxford 52, the Northwest Building, uh, the Science Northwest Building. Uh, when you go down uh, the stairs to the basement, that there is, that's where the BHI uh, actually um, conference took place. Um, the lecture hall there uh, will host um, uh, Hanok who is the director of uh, the Einstein archives, uh, and he will talk about that, and I'll introduce him and, and, and mention the BHI as well uh, in that gathering. So it starts at 5.30 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, and other than that, um, you all must have gotten the email that was sent around about how to acknowledge uh, our new funding. Um, so there are two sources of funding now. It's not just the John Templeton Foundation, it's also the uh, Gordon Betty Moore Foundation. So whoever uh, receives funds from the BHI for any related research should acknowledge that in the acknowledgements of the paper. And uh, also if you give talks about work done at the BHI, uh, there are logos. There is the logo of the BHI that uh, we just established that Fabio actually uh, produced uh, very nicely, um, but uh, in addition to that, you may put uh, the logo of the Gordon Betty Moore Foundation and the logo of the uh, John Templeton Foundation. All of them can be very small in the corner of each slide. Uh, they require that it's part of the of contract that we have with them. And the, or maybe just the first, maybe just the first. Uh, I don't, maybe, yeah, I don't think okay, it's necessary for each slide. Uh, just the first, but uh, they, they said that the size is is not an, it doesn't matter as long as all the logos have the same size. So you don't have to say <laughs> JPL on a much bigger scale than uh, GPL because um, they are giving us equal amounts of funds. <laughs> we want to reflect that in our sort of respect to both organizations. Okay, and so uh, we move on with the presentations. And before I introduce this first speaker, I um, wanted to mention that our neighbors the CMSA are hosting a general relativity seminar as well. I believe it's on Fridays. The Friday, 10, in the back. Yeah, 10.30. 10.30. Yeah, okay. the building science center. What's that? The topic. What, what do you think about? Uh, math, GR, some various things. Okay, and our first speaker is Pei Ken Hung. He's a CLE Moore instructor at MIT, and he'll be speaking about uh, linear stability of Schwarzschild space-time and harmonic gauge. Uh, thanks for the introduction, and thank the organizers uh, and the invitation. It's a great pleasure to speak at BHI, and this is my title, in just a bit, in your privacy, in Schwarzschild, under the uh, cage. Uh, the main motivation and the ultimate goal is to, uh, to study the cursed big conjecture, which is about the long-time behavior of vacuum Einstein equation, the nonlinear equation, on the metric. But today, we are going to focus on its linearization. We are going to linearize the equation, and we are going to put in the harmonic gauge. For the reason, I'm going to explain. So this will be the main equation we study. And this one is closely related to the wave equation on one forms. So this, we will also uh, study the behavior of the solution. And the analysis tool to uh, study these equations comes from the study of scalar wave equations. We are both going to use that to study wave equations on one forms, and from that, to study linear gravity. And the ultimate goal would be the curves that we conjecture, but we are still quite far from it. OK, let me give you a, a brief overview of the curves that we conjecture. The vacuum minus equation is the rigid flat equation on the uh, Lorentz metric, rigid g equals 0. We have explained solutions, Minkowski, Schwarzschild, and curve space time. The left is a special case of the right. And it is uh, believed that the curve family is, is a stable solution of the vacuum Einstein equation. In the sense that if you take a 
Cauchy uh, hypersurface with induced metric and the second part of form as the initial data. If that's exactly curved, uh, you can solve it and you get the curved space time. It's believed that if you get something very close to curve, the solution will still exist for a long time and eventually converge to a curved member. This, and here that's the Penrose diagram of the curved space time. We have the uh, event horizon, now infinity, and the blue one is a uh, Cauchy hypersurface. Okay, so today we are focused going to focus on the linearized equation, which this is the usual in the equation. The nonlinear equation is which <coughs> equals zero. So uh, by doing this, H is a metric perturbation. It's a symmetric to tensor. We ask it to satisfy this <coughs> linearized back to minus equation. From the view of the Kerstability conjecture, any solution H should converge to zero after suitable, suitable modification. I will explain below. This equation has two groups of uh, natural solutions. One comes from the curve family. For each mass and each angular momentum, you have a solution of, of the nonlinear equation, which equals zero. So at the linearized level, you can just perturb the parameter. It will give you linear, the solution to the linearized equation. And this thing, uh, this thing consists of four dimensional uh, solutions. One comes from the mass n. Three comes from the angular momentum. So this is the first group. The second group comes from the deformation tensor. <coughs> the reason it's there is that, well, Ricci equals zero is a geometric equation. It's invariant under the coordinate change. And for any, and this is the infinitesimal coordinate change. If you take a one form, take its symmetric gradient, we call that the deformation tensor. It's it stands for an infinitesimal deformism. Therefore, for any W, there's no restriction at all, it will be a solution. And obviously, that was that's infinite dimensional. And that's quite troublesome in analyzing this equation. So this is the place that uh, one needs certain gauge condition to restrict uh, that freedom. And today we are going to focus on the harmonic, or some people call it the wave gauge which is require the solution HAP to satisfy uh, these conditions. The divergence of this thing equals zero. The motivation of uh, studying this gauge is, well, it has a nonlinear on the part, which was called the harmonic or the wave map gauge. And it has been quite successful in studying the nonlinear problem. Uh, for example, the, the Cauchy problem formulation of Einstein equation done by Shukai Purha and Shukai Purha Roche was in this gauge, and also, the nonlinear stability of Minkowski can also be proved in the harmonic math gauge uh, that was done by Lindbergh Ronansky and recently by Hintz and Vasi. So, the nonlinear counterpart is quite successful, so, we want to study its linear and in the structural space time. Okay, so this is the extra equation we want to impose. This is the linearized vacuum Einstein equation. These two together is equivalent to this setting. The linearized Einstein equation is uh, changed to this least uh, which wave operator. The good thing is, well, the second line becomes a strictly hyperbolic equation on symmetric tensors. Therefore, uh, for any regular initial data, we have uh, we oppose Cauchy problem and the long time e existence. And today we are going to focus on the solution of this set of equations in the structure space time. So what's the relationship to the uh, wave one forms? Well, remember, the purpose of uh, putting the gate condition is to deal with deformation tensors. But there are still some deformation tensor which solves uh, the harmonic gauge. You can just plug that in, and that will reduce to the wave equation on the potential one form. So <coughs> this is where we got this and still, that's dimensional because you can prescribe the initial data and just solve the, uh, this wave <coughs> equation. Then take the symmetric gradient that will give you a solution of the system you are interested in. On the other hand, <coughs> even if that's dimensional, but that satisfies the wave equation, one could expect that wave is dispersed and everything uh, decays to zero. That was our original hope, but 
at the end, that's not the case. <coughs> uh, we show that uh, suppose uh, you have a uh, one more solution of this uh, wave equation, it would not converge to zero. It will converge to a stationary solution. And that happens even if you assume that initial data is compactly supported. This constant C can be computed explicitly by the initial data on the horizon. <coughs> so we don't expect uh, the, this gauge part uh, converges to zero. So what can we say about Do you remember what was the issue that we had it before? I, I probably don't have any expertise in that. Oh, the, on this? Yeah, let's see whether you can just keep it. I think that's a Windows notification. No, no, it's the TV. The remote is. Does anyone. <coughs> the remote doesn't seem to exist anymore. This is a remote. We're actually on the side of the TV, Alvin. Yeah. Just lower right. Just press in on that little. Uh, the, uh,